We've said it before, and we're likely going to say it again in the future here. The next year, perhaps the next two, if rumors hold true, are going to be incredibly weird for Call of Duty. Perhaps it's good, but there's so many questions right now as to what the future holds. We've all but had Modern Warfare 2 confirmed for this upcoming year's title, and the support for at least another 12 months to follow, but the prospect of a year off or a gap year in releases, with the following title after Modern Warfare 2 launching in late 2024, that's something that becomes complicated. Complicated for both consumers as us the players, and publishing to keep the brand afloat, relevant, and profitable for an additional 12 months where things would normally see another game drop, big sales boosts, and everything that come along with a new game release each year. Yesterday, there was a job listing from Activision that looks to provide maybe a little clarity, but also introduces maybe even more questions as to what that time will include. So today we're going to break down what we know, what has been officially described as Call of Duty 2.0, and what that means. As we go along, drop your thoughts down below. What do you think we'll see happen in the next two years? A period of uncertainty for Call of Duty for sure. Is there anything in particular that you'd like to ideally see happen for you? Whatever the case, drop your thoughts down below. But if you enjoyed the video, do me a favor, drop a like on it. And if you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss a single thing regarding all things Call of Duty related as we press on this road to half a million subscribers here on the channel. And finally, if you'd ever like to support the channel a little further, remember that Creator Code Espresso is an entirely optional way to do so if you're ever interested. But that said, let's jump into it. First reported by Charlie Intel, there was a job listing for Activision with a description as follows. 2022 is a stellar opportunity for Call of Duty with an extraordinary lineup of innovations in curated player experiences, multi-platform gameplay, subscription-based content, mobile game development, and a move to always on community and player connectivity. We call this COD 2.0. Now, that job listing has since been removed, and it's not something that you can end up looking up in any capacity, and even if that position actually pops up again, I would imagine that that is then a so that it doesn't give any sort of hints or anything like that that we can then derive and make a video speculating about the future like we can with this past listing but there's some interesting stuff here with this and perhaps the biggest question mark to come out of it is the subscription based model this something being that of course, naturally would supplement revenues in a year without a game, like in 2023. But while there's a lot of theories about how this could work, it's not the first time that we've seen a subscription-based model within Call of Duty. If you guys have been around the community long enough, you may remember something called COD Elite. Elite was a subscription-based service that really saw things run in Modern Warfare 3. It went free to all in Black Ops 2 before finally being discontinued in Ghost, but Elite actually had a wide range of things from free to paid usage throughout Modern Warfare 3, again, primarily during that year. A lot of the free stuff you might not even consider was elite stuff looking back it seems kind of like commonplace things but elite offered to free members theater mode with the ability to directly upload to youtube 30 second clips career stats statistical heat maps the ability to change and update your loadouts anywhere while on the go vault slots to save things from your theater mode and a lot of other things like that some more basic things but of course probably what everybody knows about the elite model was more so that it was the dlc offering this introduced monthly dlc which was still affected by that xbox exclusivity deal at the time so a month earlier than PlayStation users, and then two months earlier than Xbox for users, three earlier than PlayStation for users. You also saw things like video series throughout the year, elite exclusive events and prizes, and other things like that. With Founders, the first ones activating or buying into this, getting things like an exclusive weapon camo, that being the Modern Warfare 3 Winter camo, a COD Elite profile skin, and a few other things like that. But of course, the biggest thing that you'd probably remember out of that was the DLC packs. At that time, it was monthly content packs, which consisted of things of either traditional MP maps, face-off maps a little later, and some Spec Ops content. You'd see on average anywhere from like two to five maps introduced each pack, so monthly, but some having a little bit more, some having a little bit less. And this was, again, something that was first for Xbox 360 users who had Elite, a month later for PlayStation 3 users had Elite, and then another month later after that, so two months after the initial content drop, for Xbox 360 non-Elite members, and three months later for non-Elite PS3 members. But at that same time, more content was dropped every single month. So it's not like Xbox users had to wait until everybody got it before they got more stuff. You'd have content drops in January, February, March, April, and so on, just staggered depending on what platform you played on. But the landscape has definitely changed drastically since then. And I don't think that we'd see this mentioned subscription service in the same vein that we saw Elite. With all DLC, base weapons, and maps being free to all players now and across all platforms at the same time, that's been wildly successful and positive received by the community so i don't think that we go back to that elite style model but in recent times maybe there's a few things that we can look at that may shape what we could see here at this we of course recently did see that there was the fortnite crew subscription introduced recently where i think that's what like 12 bucks or something like that for access to the seasonal battle pass v bucks and monthly cosmetic packs 
I don't follow Fortnite too much, forgive me if I'm a little bit incorrect here on this, but it also would seem like something that, like COD seasons, they last more than one month, so you'd be paying, in direct comparison to Call of Duty, about $24 for what would be two additional cosmetic packs if it worked out exactly like this. And then, of course, we also saw recently that announcement of GTA Plus. That membership has rightfully angered a lot of players because, to me, it's just not worth it for what's on offer versus what you pay. But while you do see other games introducing models like this, if you remember, we actually may have had our first look here back in June of last year, where a player survey went out to Call of Duty players that asked what you'd be willing to pay for a 12-month Battle Pass subscription, explicitly mentioning, though, that that subscription would also include the full game. And we've seen stuff like this happen beforehand, surveys with questions foreshadowing what would come in the future to give actual, accurate public feedback, but in a more confidential approach here. So that's something that may be our first look here at this, where this subscription-based model may be the full game plus a year of Battle Passes. Now, if that's something that does actually happen, I got a couple of hopes here for this. Number one, save money on the game and the battle passes overall. You, of course, have to add value to it because right now we see a $60 to $70 entry depending on what platform generation you get the game on. Plus, if you end up buying each battle pass, theoretically to save yourself the most money, you end up getting that 20 tier skip bundle that is $20 each in equivalence to COD points. So that said, you're looking at $180 minimum for an entire year of content with what we have introduced right now. In that aforementioned survey, they wouldn't let you input any value lower than $70 because they mentioned that's the cost of a Call of Duty game. But I'd be curious to see the average amount input here with that feedback. I mean, to me, I think you have to incentivize quite a bit for that long-term commitment, make it at least half that price, like maybe $90 for an entire year of content plus the game itself, let alone if you also want to incentivize a two-year level of content distribution. Also, I think you got to see some more stuff like exclusive content and additional rewards, not just the battle pass items inside there and access to them. Introduce more exclusive skins, blueprints, COD points, and stuff like that, and then I think you might see things worthwhile a little bit more. But at the same time, my other hope here is that this does not become an all-or-nothing scenario like we saw with, say, the Black Ops Pass and Black Ops 4. For that, you either bought into the Black Ops Pass that was the entire season pass of content, or you didn't get any of the DLC at all. So in that same right, if you don't want to buy into the subscription-based model, you want to buy the base game, and then maybe buy one or two battle passes later on down the line, hopefully that option is still there if that becomes something as well. Now, another common theory that we see out there is that the game could go free to play and that's how we gain access to a lot of what's coming, where the subscription-based model then gives additional access outside of that. A truly games-as-a-service model, which COD seems to want to transition to here over the course of the last few years, but I don't know if we'll get there. If we, say, saw the MP experience be free to play with DMZ and campaign being tethered to a subscription model, I don't know that I'd all that much mind, to be honest with you. Open up the game to the masses, as we've seen. Call of Duty is a huge success with Warzone being free to play. That's something that offers a much larger audience then at that point. And if you want a game to last the whole two years, maybe, just maybe, doubling, tripling, or quadrupling that initial player count is a nice way to do that. The revenues can absolutely come over time, as evidenced by just the current market that Warzone ends up introducing here with this. It's an insanely profitable way to do that, with free-to-play and then what we see right now. So maybe free-to-play is actually the wave, though I do think we may still be a few entries into the franchise away from that, since Activision has historically been a more conservative mover in the space. They don't really want to take those big gambles on, say, launching a game free-to-play until it's proven in the space to be profitable even without that initial boost in sales every single release. But I do think that'd be an awesome way for this to become a COD 2.0. Hell, even if it is for just a year to pass, essentially, where the game goes free to play in the fall of 2023, our $60 to $70 base entry games that we ended up getting later this year could have just gotten that early year of access. I'd kind of be okay with that, I think, too, at that point. But there's a lot of question marks, a lot of things that we may be able to base off of prior experience already, but I'd love to get your thoughts and feedback down there in the comments section down below. What do you think will amount here to this? What do you think will be the subscription service? And what COD 2.0 will actually be? Feel free to drop your thoughts down below, but if you guys enjoyed the video, do me a favor and drop a like on it. If you're new to the channel, hit the subscribe button so you don't miss a single thing regarding all things Call of Duty, whether that be Modern Warfare 2 content here, potentially even very, very soon, if there is a reveal on the horizon within the next month or two, as a possibility, stick it here on the channel if you guys are out all interested in that and anything COD related. That said, thanks so much for watching. My name is Espresso. I'll see you guys later. Take care and peace.